All right, give us a hand. We made it. Okay, we've got a really, um, I've come across some interesting things I was going to teach on, but then I realized that I needed to teach something much more important. So um, what this session will be about is something that we, we think we know. In our day and time, we have a lot, a lot of information, right? You go to Google, you type in something, you get a lot of information. Not always what you want, but you get a whole bunch of information. Most of it's controlled, it's curated, it's modified, but you get all this information. The question is, is that knowledge? What's in between knowledge and information? And what happens is we confuse the two. So what I'm going to try, I'm going to try, when the Bible talks about knowledge, what does it mean? Does it mean information? Does it mean data? What does it mean? Have you ever wondered about this? You know, we know what we mean when we say knowledge, but what does God mean when he says it? When it's in the word, what, what does it mean? Do you ever wonder about these things? Yes. Oh, I do. <laughs> I was like, okay, I know what I know, but that's what does the actual word mean? And the English is not always a good translation. Neither is any other language sometimes. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and impart to you the importance of knowledge, what is wisdom, and what is understanding, so that you can walk out this door and your life will be changed and you will no longer be the same. It's like a good idea? Okay. So it's, the problem is we think information is what we need and information is irrelevant. If you're trying to go from downtown to this house, does it help to know how to get to Chicago? That's totally irrelevant, right? Because you want to go here, not mm -hmm. Chicago. So that's information, but it's not what you need. It's not knowledge that you can what? Apply. So, Father, thank you right now for helping me to teach. I thank you for each person here for the value and importance of their lives, that they can in this day and time truly be examples to others, to truly excel in everything they do, to rise above every challenge, and to truly glorify you just as your firstborn. Arisen, your firstborn from the dead are risen and return, Lord Jesus. You're anointed. All right, so I'm going to start off with some really simple things because what we think and what the Bible says is not the same. So I'm going to try and introduce you to some interesting concepts. And I really need you to think. Everybody got their lights on up here, right? Everybody got, you know, everybody on, uh, on, make sure it's on up here, okay? Because we're going to be tackling a very unique subject. All right, I'm going to call it, what, that's, that's a, a flint uh, tool, right? <coughs> made by, it's handmade, really, right? Paleolithic. Um, no, it's, an, it's more like a, a, an owl. It's got a sharp edge here. Have you ever done any napping? No. You know what napping is? Where you take a flint and you go to another, another rock? Break it off? Okay. It's called napping. Um, go to college, you take archaeology and anthropology. You spend a couple days napping. Not sleeping, but, you know, oh. napping. <laughs> making, making little stone tools. All right, but anyway, so what we're going to cover is the end of the Stone Age. Now, what's wrong with the, what, what's, what is Frank? The Stone Age? What are you talking about? Because the Bible begins, as you read it, it begins basically in the Bronze Age, and most of it is in the Iron Age. It doesn't even cover the Stone Age. But yeah, the Stone Age existed, and it, and it precedes. But uh, I want to cover some aspects of this. So the end of the Stone Age. What caused the end of the Stone Age? How many went to college? Anyone go to college? What, what, what caused the end of the Stone Age? Pardon? They made it illegal. Okay. All right. <laughs> Can't get stoned. All right. No napping. All right. All right. So the end of what killed, what ended the Stone Age was this. Knowledge. It wasn't that they ran out of stones. Right? We still, we still got a whole bunch of them. So the reason, the importance is that knowledge is the thing that changed. What, what took man out of the Copper Age? Knowledge. What took him out of the Bronze Age? What took him out of the Bronze Age? 
Okay, only a few of you know that. And what took him <laughs> Each age that we went through, not ages and growing up, but the, the development was different. And this is important to understand that knowledge is what makes the difference. What's in between you and six years of age? Knowledge. Knowledge. Basically the same person, you just got a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Like I got a whole bunch of experience and knowledge. But um, I'm still the same guy I was when I was this big. I've just grown a lot bigger. But anyway, but you understand, we're all the same basic people we were when we were mini people, you know, rug rats, curtain climbers, carpet commanders, except for her, she was that size. But anyway, <laughs> just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many of you know how to throw a spear? You ever know how to throw a spear? Huh? How many of you ever throw a spear, right? All right, everybody knows, I know how to throw a spear. You just grab a piece of thing and go, wham, right? Well, that's not how it works, right? You're dealing with the, the, uh, the uh, end of the Paleolithic era, the Stone Age, the high end, they call it the high Stone Age. They didn't use, they didn't just throw a spear. They would use what was called an atlat, all right? Uh, an atlat is different from throwing a spear. What you do is you have a little thing on the end of it that you hook into it, and then when you, and you just hold it, and then you go like that, and you go Whoa. And what it does is it throws this thing Instead of throwing it 40, 50 feet, it throws it to 110, 120 feet. And it throws it at 100 miles an hour. So you think you know how to throw a spear. These guys in the Paleolithic era could throw a spear much better than you could ever dream of. You can't, you can't throw a spear 100 miles an hour. But with an atlat, you can. And that's throwing a spear at... 100 miles an hour because you're hooking the back into this so you're giving it that much more leverage to throw it and instead of being throwing it so you can throw it like because if you throw a spear it's usually about 25 30 miles an hour but when you put an atlet behind it and you go wham as you throw it then you take it back and you go wham it, it'll actually transport that at 200 miles an hour that's pretty in intense so how does it feel to be dumber than a caveman? Because <laughs> you would have just thrown it, right? But that's not how they did it. They used an, a nut lap. That's how you spell it. I've had, you can go, all kinds of people have different ways of pronouncing it, but I want to introduce you to that. So what's the next step up from this? What's the next step up from this? And it happened, this, this was 40,000 years ago, both the Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon species were, did this. They used the outlet. It's everywhere. But the next thing up from that was the, this is from a, a, a petroglyph, is an arrow and a bow. See, an arrow and a bow. And that, that goes back to right around 15,000 B.C. So we have the arrow and the bow. We had the outlet first, then we had the arrow and the bow. Then what happened? What's the next thing that got developed? Then right around 8,000 BC, the television. No, I'm joking. <laughs> the net was developed. And the net is so intense because not only could you use it for catching little fishies, right? You could also use it if you make them really good as you can overthrow it, overthrow it. You can throw it over a creature, and then everybody holds the net, and he can't get out of it, and then you can throw all the atlats you want at him. <laughs> and he can't go anywhere. So you, you hold him down with a net. So nets were used. So at the end, the actual end of the, the beginning of the, or after the Paleolithic era, man began to taking charge of the world. Now the next stage after that, because the net changed everything. Now we have pottery, we have crops that are being grown. They start um, breeding animals, taking care of animals and sheep. And you have all these and goats. All this started off about 8,000 BC. And this was the beginning of civilization as we know it. What's the difference? What's the change? 
The change is knowledge. Now, under, this is so hard for us to understand because we just think of one day they just woke up and go, I'm going to do this. And then all of a sudden, that's not how it works. You can't jump and become better without more what? Knowledge. But not just knowledge. Okay, now you know how to make an outlet. How many could do it? I give you the knowledge, but you need to learn, have some what? Experience. You need to try and work with it. How big around do you make the, 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 the spiritual throwing? How big around? You ever wondered about that? Shouldn't be, yeah. It should be about as big around as your thumb. You don't want a big, thick one. You want something that's going to wobble. Right. It has to wobble. Just like when you, when you shoot an arrow, it, it, it oscillates. They call it oscillation. And so you want that. So when you actually throw it like this, the outlap, you bend it. It bends. And then it straightens out. Then it bends the other way. And that constantly gives more force to the forward movement to get it up to 100 miles an hour. Is that interesting? And then you can put little rocks on the on your atlas to make it so it's silent. So it stops, you don't hear this whoosh sound. It's quiet. And the animal will never know what hit it. You can use the atlas for I mean, if you're talking about spear fishing, you know, we grab a spear and you try and catch the fish, and by the time it hits the water, it goes, right. But with an atlas, you throw that in there, man, it goes in 100 miles an hour and hits that fish about 50. So it's much better at spearfishing with an atlet. So now you know this stuff, isn't that neat? Now that tells you a bit about how, it, but see, the key is what? Knowledge. Knowledge. All right, let's take it, let's go, let's reverse the situation here. Rather than us from this point looking at that time, what do we say? We reverse it. Let's start off. Stonehenge man didn't leave the Stone Age because he ran out of stone. That's not how it works, right? He gained in knowledge and what? Wisdom and understanding. How many have knowledge about that lot? You do, right? You can put feathers on the end of it. Make sure it's thin because you don't want it thick. You want to be able, and you want to put away on the end of it like maybe a, a spearhead. But how you, have you ever done it yet? No. All you have is what? Knowledge. But no wisdom. And because you've never done it, you have no what? So here he is. This is uh, CM, caveman, right? Who's there? Hi, CM. All right, you see him? All right. Now let's say I introduce him to a Lamborghini. And he sees that, right? Now understand, everything that's on the earth now existed back then. Everything that existed, that exists now, existed back then. The metals were still there, everything was there. But the only thing he knew of, the only thing he was familiar with, was what? Stone. And he could nap, and he could, he could, he could, he could actually put uh, a rock, suspend it uh, with a rope, and run it back and forth over another rock to make it flat, to shape it. A lot of brilliant things they did. But nonetheless, that which they saw is what they used. That which they didn't see, they couldn't use which they had never envisioned they couldn't bring to pass. So if he saw this, he would just freak out. Yet everything that makes this existed in his time. What's the problem? Why didn't he come up with a Lamborghini? He lacked what? Knowledge. A lot of knowledge, like a whole bunch of knowledge. Now, how many here could build a Lamborghini? <laughs> Most of us can't even throw an atlet yet. <laughs> you don't throw an atlet, you throw a spear with an atlet. But we don't know because we lack what? Knowledge, Knowledge and what? Wisdom. Wisdom. We, we don't have the opportunity to increase in that. So we just ride around, ride along on someone else's knowledge and wisdom. Does that make sense? All right. So what is this thing worth? Now, what is this worth, that rock right there he's making? Worth what? Maybe 20 bucks at the most? $10? He's putting his work into it? $10 job? I mean, you've been in Mexico. You've seen those statues they make. They put in 10, 20 hours making a statue and sell for what, 20 bucks? 
Yeah. Now this, how much does this go for? $250,000. As an expensive car. Pardon? Yeah, it's the price of a house. Almost a, a, a medium-sized house. But anyway, there it is. Can you imagine buying this instead of buying a house? I think that would be insane, but nonetheless. <laughs> not to mention your insurance and repairs. But none, some people got that money they can just throw away. I think it's stupid, but anyway. Um, yeah, so this is interesting because this is worth what? Maybe five, ten bucks? This thing's worth $250,000. So let's keep all the parts together, but let's modify it a little bit. What's it worth now? What's it worth now? Same car, just smashed. Pardon? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Everything's ruined. Everything is destroyed. Why is it the same material is there? Everything that this car has is here. It's just rearranged a little differently. This has all the knowledge. This has some knowledge modified or missing. Things aren't where they're supposed to be. They're rearranged in different locations, not according to the knowledge they know to make this. Yes, major lack of wisdom. He was driving at 210 miles an hour. And he tried to make a curve. It was only for 45 miles an hour. And he went sliding into a... Anyway, so as you can see, this car is not in good shape. So how do we get it from here back to here? No, no, no. The knowledge is what? It's lost. It's gone. So all that knowledge that went into making this is now gone. The knowledge of making this is still around. You see that? Everything deals with knowledge. Why, how many have ever paid someone to do something? Anyone ever do that? Why didn't you do it yourself? You lacked what? And you lacked what? And you lacked what? Understanding. So, when, so because you couldn't do it, you paid someone who did have what? And what? And what? Understanding. You paid them for it. Now what happened on the other side? Where'd you get the money from? You got the money from your people paid you for your what? Your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding. Got it? You understand how this works. Everybody's so interested in that which they convert their time, energy, knowledge, wisdom, understanding into to hold it until they spend it. So they take some of their effort, their knowledge, their wisdom, their understanding, they put it aside into something, and then they spend it. So all that commerce is, everything we do, is only an, an exchange of what? Got it? We get, don't fall into the caveman. You're like, give me some money, give me some money. That's not it. Increase your what? Knowledge, wisdom, and what? Understanding. The more wisdom, knowledge, and skills, the skills you have, the knowledge you have, the ability you have is constantly increasing, you become more and more what? I did 20-some years in, in the, well, almost 30 years in the computer industry. So how much was I worth? $700 an hour. People hired me to go out there and fix a computer for $700 an hour. That's nice. And how long did it take me? About 45 minutes. Seriously. Some guy will be working on there for three or four days or three or four weeks. Finally, they go, ah, bring him in. And I take care of it in 45 minutes. There you go. Fixed. And they go, huh? Ah, I had more what? I had more experience. I had more wisdom. I had more understanding. They took three, three weeks, four weeks, or even a month. And it only took me what? 45 minutes. So they didn't even have to pay me the, well, they started paying me $700, but that's beside the point. I saved them a lot of time. And so you, and <laughs> yeah, a lot of it. Because they were losing money every day, and they finally just gave up and hired me, and then I came in and fixed it. All right. So understand, knowledge is the principal thing. Yes or no? 
and you, what you're doing is exchanging, like a doctor make a good amount of money. He did 12 years of college. He's got, he's got four years of, of internship. He's got experience. So what that doctor is earning is because of his knowledge, wisdom, unless you can perform the operation. You ever try and perform an operation on yourself? I'll pass. <laughs> right, I'd have to be pretty, anyway. Not pretty, I mean pretty, you know, that kind of thing. So what is knowledge? And why is it different from, I'm really important to understand from the word of God's point of view to grasp how this works. But when it comes down to what is knowledge, not information, information is, you, you, get, you get bombarded with information. But what's knowledge? First of all, when you get real knowledge, first thing it is is a what? It's a surprise. Ah. Right? One, two, three. Ah. It's a surprise. Every time you learn something, every time you gain knowledge, it was like, ah. Ah, I got it. It's always a what? If it wasn't a surprise, you didn't learn anything. Learning requires to be a surprise. If you already know it already, then there's no surprise. You didn't gain anything. So knowledge is always a surprise. It's unexpected. It's unplanned. This is why people reach, like in socialist countries, they reach a point where they, everybody's supposed to do exactly what they're told and no more, no less, and there's no surprises. So there's no growth. There's no development, no learning. There's just everybody's doing the same thing over and over and over again, and there's no way to grow. There's no way to develop. So knowledge is always unexpected, unplanned. All right, think about, I know, like, for instance, how we get the microwave. Guy had a, a candy bar in his pocket, and he turned on the microwave and then turned it off, and all of a sudden his chocolate bar was melted. He went, how'd that happen? Surprise. Got it? All our great Madame Curie finding out that she put a photographic plate next to some new ore that she discovered, yellow, yellowish ore. And when she went to look at, look at the photograph plate, it was all exposed. Where'd the energy come from? Surprise. She discovered uranium. Everything that we have, the light bulb, the um, Marconi's phonograph, radio, all these things were all done by what? Surprise. We were all surprised. Wi-Fi. What happened with that? It was a what? Surprise. They're like, whoa. Even some of the sweeteners. The guy was making insecticide. And he handed it to his assistant and said, test this. And he thought he said, taste it. And he tasted it. He went, oh, that's really sweet. The guy goes, what'd you just do? He goes, I tasted it. It's sweet. He goes, what? And that's how we got one of our sweeteners. I don't want to mention a name because I don't want to get sued. But anyway, <laughs> but that's how we, I'm sorry? Artificial sweetener. Yeah, artificial sweetener, right. It's actually insecticide, just like you'd like to know. But surprise, surprise, surprise yeah. What does it do? What else does knowledge do? Knowledge also increases individuals' what? Ability. What you can do, something you can do now, you couldn't do what? Before. Increases the individual's value because people know you can do it. They need you. It increases the individual's wealth. People are willing to pay you for your added information, for your added knowledge, for your added ability. That's why you should never stop what? Learning. Got it? Learning, not working. I'm doing the same thing every day. No, you need to be learning, advancing, making yourself more valuable. The individual's perception of what? Reality, because now you saw something you never saw before. Now you're seeing life differently than other people. Increases the individual's power and what? How, what do I mean by power? You can go, nope. Hey, you want to help me out? Nope. I'll pay you so much. Nope. You get a chance to say no. That is so, that's so gratifying to know you don't have to, oh, I need to do whatever I can to get. 
bad, nuts with that. You get a chance to say no and refuse. And that is freedom. That is power and influence. Knowledge, you ever heard this phrase before? Knowledge is what? Power. Francis Bacon. Not France is Bacon, it's Francis Bacon, right? He's the one that first said that, but it's true. Where do you get it from? The Bible. Knowledge is power. But people don't know the Bible. They don't understand the premises in which it's given. They don't understand the importance of knowledge. knowledge. They say, all I got to do is just have faith. Just have faith. Just have faith. That's not how it works. I've never driven a car in my life before, but I'll just have faith. Oh, boy. I've never flown an airplane before, but I'm just going to jump in the cockpit and have faith. That's called stupid, right? God would never have you do that. Knowledge is what? Power. Knowledge is wealth. From it, you convert your wealth, your knowledge, into assets that you can sell or trade, whether it be currency or whatever you wish. So the object is increase in your knowledge, wisdom, and what? Understanding. How many here are supposed to be as ears of God? You're supposed to be increasing in what? Knowledge and wisdom and understanding. You're stewards for God on earth. All right. So, 1 Timothy 6.20. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain what? Babblings. People that don't know, don't understand, don't comprehend, they just give you what they think, and it's like no concept of reality, and they just, blah. Ever had that happen? Someone doesn't even know what the heck they're talking about, and out they go. And oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Do you know what science is? It's science knowledge. It's proven. It's not, does everybody agree with me? Yes, okay, there it is, it's science. That's not science. Get a bunch of idiots together that, you know, academic idiots who've never had any experience in real life, and they all agree on something that they have no idea what they're talking about. It's never been put to the test. So let me give you a formula here. Keep that which is committed to thy trust, as is yours, avoiding profane and vain what? What does vain mean? They just, they just let them, this mouth is in automatic mode. Right? And they talk about all the stuff that's profane, common, of no value. And science, falsely so-called. It's not science, it's falsely called science. And it's not. So what is the distinction? True scientific knowledge must be falsified. What does that mean? Must be falsified. Proven, that's right. You must set up and test whatever is given. Not one time, multiple times repeated to verify it's authentic, it's correct. It has to be put to the test. And some walks away and says, you know, we're living in a multiverse. I'm like, okay, and that's vain what? Vain babblings. Why? How in the hell are you going to test that? That should never even be brought up. That's not a scientific way to pursue knowledge. You don't just babble on about there's multiple dimensions. Like, all right, what other fantasy stories you want to bring out? You want to talk about the, the MCU and, you know, Captain America? What do you want to do? That whole stuff is absurd. When you're talking about science, it needs to be what? Falsifiable. And if you can't, then shut up. Is that making sense? You don't, you don't just listen to people who have no idea, have never been tested, and they go, this is it. All right, give me the data. Let me see the data. Don't tell me what the conclusion is. Just give me the what? The data. I'll examine it. Mm. True scientific knowledge must be what? 
falsifiable. Put it to the test. If it cannot be put to the test to prove it, if it is true or false, then it is profane and vain what? Babblings. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about a Bible that goes back 8,000 years. How come it still applies today? Because people are still the same. Nobody's changed. People would rather say, well, that's what someone says, and that must be true because I like him, and he's good-looking or whatever. She's good-looking, so I'm just going to accept what they say. No, no, that's not how it works. You need to put it to the test. Is that making sense? Think of something that people are taking as being real without being tested. No evidence, no, this is the way it is. And it's absurd. There shouldn't, it should not, you can't sit there and throw away all the known science that's been proven, that's been falsifiably and it is true, and then you're going to throw it all away just to be able to support a political position. That's, that's absurd. Has to be tested. If it's going to be called science, it has to be what? Tested. And in that test, it'll either be true or what? False. And you may want to do it two or three times to verify it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's how we go wound up with computers. That's how we wound up with electricity. That's how we wound up with everything. Why are we going backwards? I have no idea. It's not making sense. All right, Proverbs 2, 6. For the Lord giveth what? Wisdom. It means granted. Granted. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and what? Understanding. Now you can sit back and you can look at Einstein's words of what he said. He did not like religion. He hated it, but he loved God. Same thing with Newton. He hated religion, but he loved God. There's a problem about knowledge. Knowledge as, it's, as, a, as, a, as a component of life it wants to, you know, it's centrifugal. It wants to go out. It wants to spread. Does that make sense? It wants to, it wants everybody to know about it. That's what knowledge is. Knowledge needs to be spread. Like when the first, first atlas came out, someone says, hey, look at this. I can make it go 150 feet. You know, they didn't have feet. I'm just saying, you know, and the guy goes, oh, wow, I can make one of those. And it just moved across the whole world. Then out came the bow and arrow. Same thing. So knowledge needs to be Knowledge wants to, its, its purpose is to dis, disperse and to enrich everybody with knowledge. But what happens with authority? Authority says, nobody knows. My knowledge, my nobody gets it. So when you build an organization, which I can't seem to get out of this, because every time you build, an, you build an association or organization, they don't want anyone else to know what they know. It's my secret. I am so special. No one's going to know. It's just me. That's not how it works. So when people want power, authority over others, they don't want others to have information. They don't want them to have what? Knowledge. A lot of stuff I teach is the certain religious groups have that knowledge? Yes. Are they giving it out? No. Political power. How many times do they know something the rest of us don't know, but they don't want us to know? Knowledge is to be disseminated. Power restricts that dissemination. Got it? Now, God, which side is God on? He's the source of all knowledge and wisdom. He's like, you know, everything. And what does he do? No, I'm not going to have anybody read this. No, we're not. No one's going to read the Bible. No, that's not how it is. God says, here. You want it? Here. Have it. Yes? He doesn't care. Out of his mouth come with knowledge and what? Understanding. That's really our. God don't got a mouth. Yeah, but those of God do. Those of God do have a mouth. Can you speak for God? Can you speak for God? Can you?
Can you speak for God? So out of God's mouth cometh knowledge and what? Understanding. You're the mouth for God. God don't got a mouth. He got you. And what are you supposed to do? Give out the what? The knowledge. What do I do? Give out the knowledge. <laughs> I don't cast pearls before swine, but I give that which is bread to the eater. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and what? Understanding. What am I trying to give you? Understanding. Not only knowledge, but what? Understanding. You are to be the mouth of who? God. God don't got a mouth. God don't got a mouth. He got you. And some of us have bigger mouths than others, like me. I have a big mouth. Knowledge and understanding. Now watch 1 Corinthians 2.14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. What's the things of the Spirit of God? Knowledge, wisdom, and what? Doctrine, reproof, and what? Got it? So they're not going to hear it because they think they already what? They already know it. They're, going to, they're cavemen, and they're going to stay cavemen. I like my rocks. And I'm going to, there's nothing else that exists except my rocks. There can be nothing greater than my rocks. They have little to no knowledge, and they don't want, because their reality is only the rocks, the stones. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They're beyond, you can't see it, you can't feel How many have ever had an idea that can't be, you can't, that you can't see it, you can't touch it, but it's there? All right, let's try an example. When's the last time you saw the United States government? Let's take Mr. Caveman up here and Saying, and you're going to tell him about the United States government. He's going to look at you like, what? You know, the government. Huh? <laughs> well, if it shows up, I'll hit with a rock. No, you can't hit with a rock. <laughs> so what are we going to do with the, you understand, he can't conceive of a government. Because it's abstract. It's not something you can feel, taste, touch. I don't even want to eat it, but you know what I'm saying? The government you can't see, but it's there. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually means anything above that which is by the senses. Something that's abstract, something that is beyond the capability of someone imagining. And notice that it was always where Christianity is that the greatest inventions came to pass. Where the, the government was built on the concept of their ability to bring into existence that which has never been before. Luke 16, 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Why? Because men think that they got it down. They, they plan out the whole year. They plan out the whole nation. They got it all down pat. Socialist countries, Russian Stalinism under the communist rule. China thinks they can just plan everything out and everything's going to go wonderful. No, you've killed the increasing of what? Knowledge. You've killed understanding. You've killed development, growth, learning. You've killed it. And people are just going to be robots and do the same thing over and over again, over and over again, and they're going to be happy, right? No. The thrill is when you've got something you can't see, and step by step you're bringing it to pass. When you have a goal, when you have an aspiration, and every step you're getting closer. That's what makes life thrilling. As you gain an increase in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in that which you're pursuing. What else? What are the other people trying to do? They're not interested in that. They just want to make everybody happy with them. Are you happy with me? Is everybody happy with me? To hell with that. Imagine Jesus walking around going, Pharisees, are you all happy with me? Not, not fat chance. 
or slim chance, which is it, fat or, chat, fat or thin? I don't know. But you understand the problem. He never, Jesus didn't say, can I have permission to speak? No, they would never live. There's no way. So look for those things that are not common. Look for those things that no one else can see. Gain more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Get your mind tuned to discover, like Newton, like Einstein. Think in terms of that which is not normal and allow God to open the doors for you. Knowledge and understanding is a surprise. Surprise! You heard the story about the, 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 uh, the wagon train? And they were going out, they were going to go to Colorado from Texas, and they get over there, and there's a Chinese man, right? And because they're, they're, the guy's in charge of supplies, the general manager, he's, he's not, he's sick. So the Chinaman says, I'll, I'll join. He says, okay, we're going to put you in charge of supplies. He goes, okay. Do you understand? We're going to be leaving at this date, and we got to make sure we have all the supplies we need. He goes, oh, yeah, I'll give you a big surprise. All right, so he's going to make sure that they have all their supplies. So they start, they start off, and where's the Chinaman? Where is he? And so they start heading out. And about 20 miles out of town, he jumps out from the rocks and goes, supplies! All right. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so, okay, here we go. Knowledge and understanding is surprise, not supplies, surprise. All right. Knowledge and understanding is surprise, and contrary to what is acceptable and expected by the masses. So when they came out with a railroad, everybody laughed. They said, a horse is better, right? So what they do? They said, you're right. Let's get rid of all the railroads. No, they didn't. They continued to build them. Then Henry Ford said, I got an idea. We're going to make an assembly line like a railroad track. And as we move it, they'll keep adding on to it, just like the railroad track. We're going to call it the assembly line, a line for assembly. Brilliant man, right? Bill, what are you making? The car. Why? To replace the horse. We don't, want, we don't want a car. We want a better horse. No, no, no. Cars. Anyway, it came out. His automobile came out. In uh, 1902, and everybody laughed at it because it couldn't do what a horse did. And all that horse poop all over the road, the, the car would get stuck in the horse poop. So they, they all laughed, see? At least my horse can step in the poop and keep going. Well, anyway, the cars got better and better. By 1912, there was no, in New York City, there was no horse and buggy, only cars. In 12 years, the whole United States was changed. But who was ready for it? Nobody. And all the people that were building the horse and buggy were like, stupid automobile, it won't come around. And then now they didn't have a job. How fast is things going to change this time? Faster. Learn, understand, recognize. Knowledge and understanding is surprise, that which is not expected, not planned, and contrary to what is acceptable and expected by the what? Masses. If you, you don't have the masses on your side, you pretty much got the right idea. Got it? All right. Can someone tell me what they see? Can you, can you see it? All right, so who wants to be the one speaking for the group? All right, go ahead. There's a shadow on the bottom there. So I just, yeah. Shadow, okay. So we have a shadow. Anything else? <laughs> we have three-dimensional objects. Okay, we have three-dimensional objects. Huh. And we have a shadow. Anything else? It's a three-dimensional. Background is two different colors. We have a blue... Green carpet. Is that green or kind of a red and green mixture, right? What else do you see? 
there's this elephant in the room here. Hello? <laughs> Anybody see that? Like, we're going all the way around it here. All right, we got blue skies, and we got a carpet and a shadow. Ah, does everybody agree with that? Yeah. All right, how many? Okay, say, does anyone see a distinction between this color and this color? Yes. All right, All right. are these two the same? Yes. Is this the same as this? Yes. Put charm. There you go. So if you said these are different colors, eh, that's that French word, bluette. Because your eyes lied to you. But you can always trust what you see. No, you can't. Nothing is absolutely sure. You always have to test it. And this is the test. It's to distract, to make this come out more, more brighter as compared to this. It's to make this more brighter. It's an optical what? Illusion. I've just disillusioned you. One, two, three. Oh, right. Did I give you a surprise? <laughs> this is not true. And I showed you a hologram, and that's not what? That's not true. If you grab it, it what, there's nothing there. So it, this is not real either because, as you can see, they're the same color. All right, I got another one for you. Which one of these center circles is bigger? Of these two. <laughs> we only got two circles here I'm talking about, the center one. Which one's bigger? The one on the right or the one on the left? Yes, that's the question. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> okay, we're measuring this. And it's exactly two inches. And this one, exactly two inches. They're identical. Then why does this one look smaller? Because the brain has to compare. Yes. The brain has to compare. So it has no reference point except that which is closest to it. So because these are bigger, this has to be what? And because these are smaller, it has to be bigger. And since we're looking at the two of them, this has to be smaller, and it's not. They're identical. So what does this mean? Well, that means when you go and you order, you know, a woman, woman wants to order a dress and shoes and all this nice stuff, they will take the most expensive thing and they'll put it at the top and the second most expensive is right underneath of it. So it won't seem that the second one was that expensive. So you look at pricing of things by what's ahead of it and what's behind it, what's after it. If you rearrange things when you, do it, when you see things that you're going to buy or people come in and try and sell you, they always put the most expensive thing at the top and the next most expensive mm -hmm. thing right after it so it doesn't sound so much. You never take the cheapest one first, because then just so you're getting more and more expensive, people will say, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm losing too much money. But if they're going down the list and it's getting less and less, they feel like they've got a good deal. Because they're comparing each one for the one ahead and the one behind. You'll notice that when you're going to buy something, there we go. And you get this, and you get this, and you get this, and you get this. And the very last side is very smallest. And you think, that's not so bad. You reverse it and you start with the small go to the bigger, you feel like, oh my God, they're taking me to the cleaners. Right? So it's a psychological trick. All right. All right, now here's something interesting. There is black dots on there. How many black? I want you to count the black dots. How many did you get? How many did you get? 
You see a problem? Is there a problem? All right, let me explain what's going on. The brain, if you, if you look, actually go like this, like this, and hold it from your eye, that's the field you see. That's exactly the field of your eye. Your eye will go like this, zip, 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 and remember what it saw. And that's why if you look here, all you see is this. The rest of it, your brain fills in. So when you look to one, you can't see anything except maybe that one. You don't see this one. You don't see that one. If you focus on that one, you may see this one. You may see that one, but you won't see the others. There's no peripheral vision. The brain will re remake this in your head, not actually seeing it because your eyesight is only this big from your eye. If you go like this, that's the area that right about there is the, what you can see. Your brain does a quick scan and remembers it. So the reason you can't see the dots is because your brain's filling it in for you. That's why when you're looking it over, you're trying to find the dots. So like, okay, where'd they go? Where'd, th where'd that one go? Where'd that one go? Because the brain is, every time you move from one dot to another dot, the others disappear. Because the brain, because you're only seeing something that's like this big. And the brain just fabricates the rest. That's why it's not showing you the rest of the dots. But you can depend on what you saw, right? No. There's 12. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Twelve. And you're going, ah, oh, my eyes hurt. <laughs> yes? If we had three eyes, how would our perception It won't. We couldn't do it. Our brain's not designed that way. We're not like a fly or a beetle. We don't, we don't have compound eyes. We only have like, a, like an owl or like any other predator. We have binocular vision. Now, a goat has a different thing. He's got squashed pupils so it can see 180 out. We only see, the, if you want to see, if I draw you a picture, it looked like this. Watch this. If I draw you a picture, it looked like this. What am I drawing? That's my whole field of view. I'm going right to the edges of my field of view to my hand just disappears. And you can see that's all I can see. And then there's a little bitty place right here, and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. Looks like a, like a spade almost, a rounded spade. All right, Isn't that interesting? I, I find this stuff fascinating. How does the brain work, or does it work? Does mine work? I don't know. Okay. Now, this is called the hollow face. Watch it closely. That's not, that's the real mask. But when you start, there's the mask, it's turning. Now watch what your brain does. There's your mask. It's turning. It's turning. Now you're going to see the other side. Look what it did. The brain cannot. A brain looks at a face and says it has to be con. It has to be convex, but it isn't. That's concave. But the brain makes it convex. Therefore, it, it makes something that's not true. Try and focus that that's a hollow mask. Try and hold that in your mind. Right there it is. That's the mask. As it turns, don't let your brain change. And it did. You can't do it. Now, you can buy these things where it's actually a mask like that. It's called a hollow face or hollow head. And what happens is as you walk around the room, it looks like it's looking at you. It's not. It's, it's an optical illusion. Your brain is making it that way. And so you're enjoying this. So can you trust what you see? Can you trust what you hear? No. 
You can't. All right. She's had too much to drink. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> she's, she's pirouetting, right? Now, which way is her leg going? Going clockwise or counterclockwise? It's not. It's going the same direction. The brain gets to the point where it doesn't know what to do and it watches it. The brain cannot hold an image for six seconds. After that, it, has, it gets really difficult after six seconds. Mm -hmm. And the leg goes the other direction. Isn't that trip? So you can trust what you see, right? <laughs> So the problem about trusting your own feel, how many have said, this is the way it is, I can feel it's right, and we're like, you were dead wrong. You ever done that? Made a totally ass out of yourself. Why? Because you felt your perception, even though the chances of it being accurate are like pfft, ridiculously against. He that trusts in his own heart is a what? A fool. But whosoever walketh wisely shall be delivered. Well, delivered sounds weird. It's not like you're a pizza. But that's, that means you will be you know, fulfill of what you're pursuing. We can never be fully certain about what? Anything. The only thing that's absolute is God's word, and you just got to make sure you're right on God's word. Because it, just like Newton, just like Einstein, just like Planck, the default is... Everything in there has come to pass. Everything that God says is true. And everybody who tries to go against it has been destroyed. Including the Roman Empire. Including communist Russia. Every assumption must be tested. Remember that? If it's not falsifiable, what do you do with it? It's, it's a, it has no valid. It's just an opinion. It's just noise. Now understand, there's noise. And I don't know if you all deal with computers, but in, in networking or in transmission, you have what's called noise, and you have what's called intelligence, or the signal. The noise is not a problem as long as it stays the same all the time, it has very low em entropy. But the moment it starts getting crazy, it disrupts the signal. Does that make sense? So you want to have, like you've been in here the whole time, have you heard the aquarium? It's always been there, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. But because it's low em en uh, entropy, it hasn't changed. It's still the same, so you can block it out. Mm -hmm. If it was going, rah, 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 <laughs> then you'd be... <laughs> yeah, it would destroy that low em right. entropy, and, and it would disrupt the information. Does that make sense? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Or do you think I'm just blowing smoke? Okay, cool. I do blow smoke, but that's one. <laughs> All right. Every assumption must be tested and every belief verified by Scripture. And this is where you test it. Now, the reason the Scripture is there because it's 8,000 years of absolute practice. There is your peer-reviewed right there. There is the blind, double-blind test, if you will. Everything has been tested and verified, and it works and consistent to work because it deals with men's hearts, souls, and what? Also women's, too, but that's beside the point. Now, we see pistis in the Bible, right? Pistis is not faith. Never was faith. Never has been faith. The, all religions have faith. You've got to have faith in Santa Claus. You've got to have faith in Easter Bunny. You've got to have faith in the Tooth Fairy. You've got to have faith in that the government's going to take care of you. All these, these fallacies. <laughs> pistis is not faith. It's faithfulness, yes, like it is in the Old Testament, but not faith. All right? Has everybody got that? It's a, it, you set a course of discipline for your mind, your heart, and soul to pursue so that your mind can stay undisturbed. Pistis is daily surprises. Every day you learn. Every day is a surprise. 
You gain in knowledge and you gain in what? Understanding. That's what pistis is. Is daily surprises in learning, daily surprises in growing, daily surprises in development with increasing what? Which is also a surprise. I mean, sometimes I've been so surprised, I'm like, whoa, and I dance around the room. People have, Patricia saw me dance around the room. She's like, what are you doing? And then she told, I told her, and she started to not quite dance like me, but anyway. <laughs> so I was just boogieing. Okay, anyway. All right, now, understanding the importance of, is knowledge everything? No. Knowledge needs to be attached. Something has to be with knowledge. What is it? Spinach or experience, okay, which gives you what? Wisdom. And the more you keep applying it, the eventually you get what? Understanding. All right. If you had to go into critical surgery, na 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 na, they got you on the gurney, they got your clothes off, and you wear that stupid, you know, thing with the empty back, you know. And you're trying not to let anyone see your butt, and you're sitting on the gurney, you're heading into surgery. And they open the doors, and you go into surgery, and there the surgeon is. Would it bother you if this was your surgeon? I would be majorly what? Concerned. I don't care how freaking smart he is. I don't care how much he knows. There's a problem here, isn't there? He's not tall enough. <laughs> he can't reach the operating room. Anyway. <laughs> and if he knew all the answers, what, would, what still would be obviously missing? Experience. You ever get these people that are like, I'm ready to do this, or I'm ready to do that. And like, really? <laughs> okay. You understand the problem? They lack knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. They got knowledge. He may answer all the questions. He may have been, I don't know how he got board certified, but anyway, probably no one was home. Okay. What question would come to mind? How many tests did you pass? No. How many people have you freaking operated on besides me? And what did, did they survive? <laughs> See, obviously, he's too young. To have had what? Wisdom. He doesn't have it. He has no zero experience. He may have the answers, but that doesn't mean he's got wisdom. Wisdom comes from making what? And I don't want to be the first one. How many here have wisdom in many things? What did it cost you? Tons of mistakes. And because... Or, or money, or both, right? You make mistakes. Like, how much does wisdom cost? A lot. Every time you do a dumb shit, that's, that's a French phrase. It costs you, right, in finances, and it costs you in sorrow and in sadness and a whole bunch of other stuff. Huh? In every way, right. But you paid for it. It's my knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. I earned that wisdom. <laughs> Even though it gave me ulcers and everything else, I earned it. All right. So it comes from making what? Mistakes give us our wisdom. If he's your surgeon, obviously he's going to make some what? And you're the one that's going to be the mistake upon. So I would say no, 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 no. Yeah, Mr. Guinea Pig. And that's what people are doing. It's much cheaper to, to, to formulate, you know, gene therapy or a drug and just release it to the people and see what happens. Yeah. Like, whoa. Wisdom is increased by learning from your mistakes and the mistakes of what? Others. Yes, does that make sense? I want you to understand what knowledge is, what wisdom is, and what's understanding. 
what's understanding? I already gave you a hint what it is. I even warned you it was coming up, didn't I? Well, if you've got knowledge and you got wisdom by making mistakes, then what does understanding give you? Ready? Should I put the button or do you want to try? Nobody wants to guess? Thea, who is a Thea, who is a file marshal or assistant file marshal, she met a guy who um, was another marshal. He's been working with the fire department, and they were putting out a fire. He got up on the roof, put out the fire, and he he just from his experience working on other fires had everybody get off immediately. And just as he sat, he got everybody off, and he was the last one to do it. The roof came in. He knew. What did he know? He recognized mistakes before they what? You know what's about to happen before it does. You've earned that right. I'm sorry? Yeah, I know what's going on. I know exactly what's going to happen next. Got it? So there's your knowledge, which is really this worthless unless you have wisdom, come making mistakes. Person says, I've never worked on a car, but I'll tear your engine apart and make it and, and fix it. The answer is, don't touch my car, right? You've never touched an engine before. I'm not about to be your guinea pig. Never had experience. Just making sense. So don't be upset. Oh, I made a big mistake. That's not it. What did you what? What did you learn? You paid for that learning. And if other people made mistakes, let them share with you. How did you screw that one up, big boy? <laughs> and he'll explain it to you. He'll tell you the whole details. And you gain from his mistakes. Does that help? How many here just want knowledge? How many want knowledge and wisdom? Well, how do you get this? By making what? Mistakes. And with God, you only have to make the mistake once. And it looks like all hell's going to break loose, and all it is is a little, little problem. God's got you covered because he wants you to gain in wisdom. And it looks like all hell's going to break loose, and it don't. And you're like, whoa, can I tell you a secret? When I was in the military, right, I worked in a top secret area called the Vance. And in that, I worked on this extremely top secret piece of equipment. And one of them came in broke, and I got it, and I, I wasn't really paying attention. I checked it out. One half of it was blown out. Not one half, just an oscillator. So I went to order the oscillator, and when I did, my finger slipped and ordered the whole half of the transmitter. This is top secret shit. So I didn't even think about it, sent it off, and so lo and behold, a whole entourage of Marines, line, a couple, the next day, a whole entourage of Marines show up with uh, two, two officers, security officer, just to see, to make sure that this thing get, went right to my shop, and they want to know who the hell I was. And I was like, oh my gosh, because I ordered the wrong what? Did I learn? Yes. Did I gain wisdom? Yes. Was I shaking my boots? Yes. <laughs> Was I about to go to the brig? More than likely. <laughs> about to see the old man. Yeah, old man means captain. So I sit in there and I was going to God. I said, God, is everything going to be all right? He goes, yeah, you're, you're covered. I'm like, but God, they're on their way with the shore patrol. <laughs> I'm going to be under arrest. <laughs> he says, you're right. I got it. I'm like, you know, you're like, you know what God says it, but you're like, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, an airplane comes in. They had a lightning strike, and it blew out half. Guess which half? 
I just happened to have the part. <laughs> and I fixed it right there. The guy goes, how'd you know that was going to happen? I said, I didn't. How'd you, why'd you order the part? He said, I don't know. <laughs> but I saved the squadron. I saved the mission. And it turned it around in a half an hour and off it went. And guess who was the hero? But the captain kind of figured this out. He sits there and he says, you, you just screwed up and you just got your ass covered, didn't you? And I go, yeah. He goes, I knew it. No award for you. <laughs> but understand, God covers for you if you're trying to gain in what? Wisdom. If you just don't want God, you just want to gain it for yourself so you're so cool, then God's like, you're on your own. Be with God. And the consequences will be absolute minimum. Or not at all. Wind up being a hero, except for the commanding officer. Anyway, is this cool or what? Now you understand wisdom. You gain wisdom by making what? And will God cover for you if you're trying to understand and know him? Yes. So that's cool. And understanding is knowing that it's going, <laughs> seeing it before it happens. Yes? This is like a really bad idea. Let's not do that. How many have had that happen? We just got this feeling, this is a really bad idea to do this. And you didn't, you didn't do it. You don't know what was going to go wrong, but you just decided, no, we're not going to do this. Now, if you read this in English, it doesn't sound really exciting, right? But ye beloved, all right, who loves you? That's what it says, beloved, who loves you? Huh? My family, right? Well, who? It says, but ye, it's plural, beloved. So who loves you? God loves me. That has nothing to do with this. That's not what it's talking about. Building up yourselves. Pump, pump, pump. I'm so cool. I'm so great. I'm so cool. I'm so great. Aren't I wonderful? Right, that's not pumping yourself up. That's ego, right? On your most holy faith, there it is, the word faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So we just pray so hard so God comes in. No, that's not what it's talking about. What is this all about? I've been teaching you about knowledge, wisdom, and what? Understanding. Here we go. We're going to take beloved. We're going to bring it down. Find out what it's all about. And it is the word agapetos. What are agapetos? These are people that are agaping. What's agaping? Changing your thoughts, your images, your priorities to conform with God, to see from his perspective, value what he values, and act as God himself would act. That's what agapetos. Has it anything to do with beloved? No, nothing. How many here are doing your best to see from God's perspective, to act according to God's word, to be able to speak and be and have your actions conform to what God says is important? How many here are doing that? That's the all, right? So you will be agapetos. Agape God with all your what? Heart, all your soul, all your mind. Remember that? See, from God's perspective, value what God values and have God's priorities. That's what agape is, right? Everybody with me? And to number two. So that's the word agape. It has nothing to do with love. It has, love is totally different. Now we go into building. Building up yourselves. Sounds like I'm a, a weightlifter. Ooh, uh, 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 right, that stuff. Building up, right? It doesn't say that in the Greek. Is all right, oikodomio is basically the house, a building. Epe is building upon, to build your house upon. So our bodies are called the house. How many heard the house of God, right? We are all building up the house. So we're talking about building yourself up how? As a member of the body, as an ecclesia, the church. Got it? How much, how here, if anything happened to me, would God kind of like be sad about the situation? If something's valuable and it disappears, it's hurting, something's hurting, right? So is it important? if anything happened to you, would God be hurting? That's why it says, precious in, the Lord, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. He don't want his people to die. But he cannot control their priorities, their thinking, their, their frame of reference, or what they value. 
God can't control that. That's up to us to change, yes or no. So that's the word ep, which means it's epe, upon, oikodome, you build it upon. So what's, what is there to build? It's the church, the body of believers, the ecclesia. So, and then it says building up yourselves. No, you yourself build the church. Like, like Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my what? Church. And that's now our responsibility. Now we have this next phrase, which is on your most holy faith. The word faith is the word pistis, which is discipline. That's why disciples are called. And then apostles. It's everybody is disciplining to change their priorities, their orientation, their value system to conform to who? God. Does that make sense? So that word there is pistis, which is the discipline, mind, heart, and soul. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And then the last part is praying. What could this be? Oh, God, get, give me a raise at my job. Oh, God, get rid of that asshole over there. Oh, God, make my boss like me. That's, that, is, that, that, is that what it's talking about? No, that's not what it's talking about. That's, not, that's Greek and Roman crap. This is not what we think. Even though it says that, the actual word in the Greek, maybe you've heard of it, pros, prosuchomai. Prosuchomai. It's prosuche in action. It's present, future. So you prosuchomai. That means you go to God, and who gives, what does God give you? Doctrine, reproof, and what? Correction. You go to God and say, okay, where did I screw up? Am I doing okay? So you present your heart, your soul, and your mind for him for reproof, for doctrine, for what? Correction. So that's what prosuchimai is. So what are you doing? Well, there's this phrase that's interesting, Holy Ghost. It's panuma hagion, which is the panuma hagion, which is God. Now this becomes intense. So... I am agapeto. I'm thinking, having God's thoughts, God's images, God's priorities, building up the body of believers, building up the church, me, myself, trying to be the best rock, which is not hard for me. Everybody calls me a rock anyway. Building up and having pistis, that disciplined control of my mind, my heart, my soul, which is taking that agape and applying it. Prosuching, asking God for guidance. Is there anything I'm screwing up? Am I missing? Am I doing things right? Now, here's where it gets interesting. This word, in, is the word en in Greek, which means in. So when you're prosuching, you are in God. It's not God. In, you have God, his thoughts, his images. His, now you are in who? God. That's what Jesus says. I am in you and you are in me, right? Talking about God. Now you have God where? in you and around you. When you prosuche, you're going to God, and God, you picture in your mind God being where? In you and what? Around. around you. Because God says that there's no way he would ever separate from you. You and God are one, just as Jesus is one. Isn't that cool? So I'm giving you knowledge, I'm giving you wisdom, and I'm giving you what? Understanding how to be your best for God, how God to blow your socks off. If you don't wear socks, blow your hose off. All right, so now let's do it. How many of you ever seen my bullseye? Ever seen my bullseye? Yes. All right? I'm going to throw, throw darts. Okay? So on the outside, there's knowledge, right? Then we have this little line here. What is this? Trying to apply. The knowledge, and this is called the mistake line, right? Because you're going to make lots of them. To gain what? Wisdom. Then, after, then you, you, <laughs> you keep trying to get it, eventually you make it to what? Understanding. Let's try a reverse the other way. We have the what. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be programming. could be um, law. It could be corporate uh, restrictions, it could be state laws, whatever, understand what it is. Then what you do from there is how to apply it. 
That's the how. Remember I taught about the difference between what happens when you get the law? You look for the what? The precept. We have the commandment. We have the, the, the law. But how it's applied, that's where you have these different laws. But then you want to look for the what? The precept is an understanding. What is that then? That's the why. The why gives you the precept. The how is the commandment. The what is exactly what the speed limit is in each one of these areas. So we have precept. We have commandments and laws. And here we have knowledge, wisdom, and what? Understanding. Is this all making sense? Everybody still with me? Right. Good. Because I put super glue on your chair and you can't go anywhere. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> all right. So the rings are that boundary between knowledge and wisdom and wisdom and understanding. And an application is here. Knowledge is to get to wisdom. That's what these four. Got it? If you're a good drawer, you may want to draw this. Okay. Now, this is the problem. Everybody who's a, how many here were teenagers? Only me? Wow. All right. Was a All right. When you were teenagers, you had a concept of life, right? How many found out that it wasn't like you thought? Nobody? Oh, a couple? You? You? All right. I mean, you had this dream of how things are going to be, and it's not like that at all. Right? Everything is like pff, totally different. All right. So when you conceptualize something, that's Edo. You're, it's not real yet. You conceive of it. This is Gnosko. You've experienced it. <laughs> I have experienced it, and I'm not going to fall for it again. All right. So you know by experience. This is just conceptualization. Got it? You have this idea. How many have always wanted to have chickens? I'm going to have chickens. And you get the chickens. I get a rooster, too. You don't need a rooster unless you're going to have baby chickens. Right? Rooster's not necessary. Egg, chicken will lay eggs all the time. Well, not all the time, but, you know, it'll lay eggs. doesn't need a rooster unless you want to grow up little mini birds. Does that make any sense? So, this is the air and knowledge. So, Gnosko, you experience it. Okay, I find out. We actually try to do our own, you know, what do you call that? Incubation? To, to, to incubate our own eggs. Not my eggs, the chicken's eggs. All right, I don't have eggs. Anyway, I put them in there. And we put all six in there, and we got two. I'm like, okay, let's try it again. Put another four in there, and we get one. <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. Like, what about, what about the rest of these? Not all eggs are fertile. And if they are fertilized, not all of them will hatch. That's just life. So uh, we learned a lesson. But now if we had a rooster, which we do, we're supposed to have you know, living chickens coming out of those little eggs, but that doesn't always work. Does that make sense? So I've gained in what? I've gained in wisdom, and I gained in what? Understanding. Concerning chickens, right? Maybe you can relate. I don't know. So there's two types of no, oida and gnosko. Oida is when you conceptualize. How many were, when you were young, had conceptualized falling in love? Ah, it never works like that, does it? Never. <laughs> When I fall in love. <laughs> yeah, falling. This is getting back up. Like, oh, my face hurts. All right. So let's look at this. The what goes into the what? I gave it away, didn't I? The what goes into the what? All right. What goes into your what? <laughs> All right. The mind, right? If you don't mind, it's mind or matter. You don't mind, it don't matter. Anyway. There's mind, right? This is your mind. Everything you go that goes into your heart and soul first goes through your mind, right? You get an idea and you do it. So there's your mind. And then the next thing goes through your mind into your soul. And this is your identity. Like I want to be a, I want to be a veterinarian, right? So I'm going to go and, and I'm going to take veterinarian classes and learn about veterinarian. I'm going to volunteer at the the pet shop, and I'm going to volunteer at the veterinarian clinic, right? So finally, I spend so much time, my mind is filled with it. I have wisdom that I've gained with it. So now 
I are a veterinarian, right? Because I have the knowledge and I have the what? The experience. But do I really understand it yet? No. That takes time. It takes experience. Lots of experience. And that's what's called the heart, where you really can get the idea of how life really is and what's really going on. So there's the mind, the soul, which is your identity. Heart is your perception of reality. When you learn the more why, the better off you are. The more understanding, the less you're going to fall. The less you're going to fall prey to stupid, ridiculous, absurd stuff. Is this cool? <laughs> Thank you. Super clue, able to hide. No, I don't. The locations of the change is mind, soul, and heart. Like when a woman first has a baby, what does she say? She goes, she realizes, today I am a mother. She's gone from being a wife to a mother. And she sits there and goes, wow, right? And the husband comes in and goes, wow, because now he's no longer just a husband, he's a father. And that, that lasts until the second child and the third child, and it kind of gets old hat. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I'm, I'm just letting you know what happens. <laughs> You're bragging and complaining. All right. So, <laughs> all right. I just, does everything made simple for you? Everybody understand? All right. Person says, well, I want to be this. All you got to do is just practice. Learn. Gain in knowledge and what? You gain the knowledge, now you act on it. And that will increase your wisdom. And then you gain what? Understanding. To what purpose? Why? 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 Well, what's all this stuff for? I thought you just have to have faith. No, you don't. Have, that's not what it says in the Bible. There's a purpose behind this. Not a porpoise, that's a fish. That's not, it's a mammal in the ocean. But anyway, what's the purpose? Reason is what? For, right? And purpose is that, right? What's the purpose? Why does God want you to grow in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? Why does he want you to gain skill and knowledge? Why? What's the deal? Ephesians 4, 14... That, there's your purpose. That gives you what? Purpose. We henceforth be no more chillins or cavemen, right? <laughs> no more children, no more cavemen. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. It's for their benefit, not yours. But speaking the truth in agape. What's the truth? God's word. What it says, not what people think about it. Agape may grow up. It's a growth and what? Development into him in all things, which is the head, Christ. You're going to be just like Christ. No. Yeah. But you're a woman. That doesn't make any difference. That's no different. John 17, 17. Right? You ready? This is that what Jesus prayed. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And it's surprising. You can spend an hour reading the word and go, I didn't know that. And you'll be surprised. You will find stuff you thought you, that is, you didn't know that was in the Bible. And it's there. And you see that the more you do it, the more religion is terribly wrong. But you've got to see it for yourself. As thou sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. And for their sakes, your sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the what? Truth. The more you know, the more you're free. Neither pray for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all, all right, give me a, who's they all? Like in who? Right. That they all, all who? That's right. That we all may be what? One. I've always wanted to be a one. No, it's not one. It's one. Right? There may be one. Even as thou, Father, are in me and I in thee. Remember I told you about praying in God, in and around. 
that they also may be what? One in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. It's pretty hot. Why? Why the glory that God gave Christ you have? All the bennies, all the great blessings, all the great honor. Why? What's the logic to this? Purpose. That they may be one, even as we are one. How important is your pursuit, Jake, with God around you and in you? That's your practicing and being one with God. Daily understanding God's word, learning more each day. Well, I learned about six months ago, I learned something about, no, no, no. It's daily, daily. The word is food. If you can go without food for a couple months, yeah. all right. But you're not going to be very strong. This is all making sense. You understand now that it's between knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And it's not just in the Bible. It fits every bit of life. When you have more answers and you have more wisdom than your boss, you're in charge. It is the end of spiritual stone age. You're rich. So, it's going to Deuteronomy. I'm going to give you an example of what happened. What's the benefits of doing God's word the way I've explained it to you? That growth, that development. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read along with me. Chapter 28. Verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently, not half assly, mm -hmm. diligently, right? Like if you lost your wallet, you'd be searching diligently for it. Mm -hmm. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. That's pretty intense. All these blessings shall come upon thee. And what? That means if you did it and tried to run, God would still get you with the blessing. All these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city where if you're living in the, in the country. Well, blessed shall thou be in the field. Well, what about, you know, what, my body's not really strong doesn't make any difference. God's going to strengthen it. Blessed shall be in this, okay. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and flocks of thy sheep. So if you're not into sheep, and they, it's hey, whatever the equivalent is. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be when thou goest in. Blessed shall be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee, what? Seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouse and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land where the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee, if thou wilt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. The easiest way to do that is to is to know and understand the what? The precepts. They didn't have to worry about the law. I'm in verse what? Ten. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give rain in thy land in its season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not what? Isn't that cool? That's your heritage that belongs to you. And the Lord shall make thee a, the head and not the tail. 
Well, I like being the tail. It's, it smells. No, I don't. You don't want to be the tail. Bad place to be. You want to be the head. How many of you want to be the tail? How many have been the tail and are tired of being the tail? Seek to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in all that you do. Not just to know, well, if I press this button, what's, ne what's the next thing i got to press? No. Understand what's going on. Understand everything. Got it? And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. You'll be in charge. And thou shalt not be beneath. What's the contingency? If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Well, did Israel do it? Nope. Did the children after them do it? Yes. And they, that's where the difference lies. You're here to be in the place of Christ, to grow up into him. You're going to make mistakes. How many are going to make mistakes? You're going to make big mistakes. The answer is, so what? Did you learn from them? Now you move on. And God will cover for you your mistakes. How many have already seen that happen? I, I can't raise my feet too, but yeah. Alrighty. So everybody's caught in a Stone Age Christianity. Not you. Why? I'm giving you knowledge, wisdom, and what? Understanding. Freedom. And you shall know the word by experience, and the, and the word shall set you free. That's the true way of life. All right, everybody blessed. Yeah. Now, I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 4. 4 7. It's right before 4 8. Right after 4 6. I know that's hard to believe. Boy, well, is everybody blessed? I mean, I, I, I want you to understand. These words from God's perspective, not from what the Webster's dictionary. All right, are we ready to read? read, 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 read. Okay, maybe calibrate my mouth. Okay, let's all read it together. Ready? One, two, three, go. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. That sums it up. So it's do the word, and as you're doing it, you make mistakes, you get better, you get wiser, and then you gain more wisdom, more wisdom to finally get understanding. The goal is understanding. So, Father, thank you for the greatness of your word, and thank you for us being able to grow and learn and to be able to understand that we may have a greater wisdom each day and a greater surprise as our life becomes more and more exciting to see things we never dreamed of, and to be a part of things we never considered. So I thank you for each person's life here as they truly advance, grow, and develop and glorify you just as your firstborn from the dead are risen and return, Lord Jesus, your anointing. Ready? One, two, three. Your God's what? Yes. All right.